Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk history of the Ross Fountain. So the Ross Fountain, we've already kind of mentioned, it's popped up in a couple of videos when I've been wondering about Prince Street Gardens and things before. But it's this big iconic fountain at the far end of Prince Street Gardens, underneath um, underneath Edinburgh Castle. So you see it in a lot. Oh, I tripped up then. Did you see that? You see it in a lot of pictures. It's a very iconic photo, postcard kind of thing that everyone comes and everyone takes a picture of. And it's a brilliant Instagram-y kind of spot as well. But I guarantee no one who comes and sees it knows the history of it. Now, it's not, it's not made a big part in Edinburgh history. You know, it's not as if this fountain saved a million lives or anything like that. But it does have a nice little story. So that's what we're going to go talk about. Plus, it's got funny little statues that have got absolutely nothing to do with Edinburgh. So, Ross Bandstand. Now, I never knew why it was called the Ross Bandstand. I had absolutely no idea. And I had never thought about it before either. However, the fountain that we're going to, which is over there's a castle, by the way, just to get the obligatory castle shot in. You all feel happy now? Good. The, <laughs> the fountain. It's just in there, and it's called the Ross Fountain. So I'm going to guess that that's called the Ross Bandstand after the Ross Fountain. Educated guess. Or at least as educated as I get. And there it is, starting to appear there. You see it? The water starting to flow, doesn't it look pretty? Alright, okay, maybe you guys can't see it yet, but for, for me, in real life, it looks pretty. So this is it. This is the Ross Fountain. Right at the far west end. Oh, it's spitting on me actually. The wind's blowing some of the water over this way. So I'll move to the right a little bit. But this is it. You can see it's I, it's really big. Like, you, like if you see the people there, see the people there, that'll give you a perspective of how big it is. I mean, it's not quite as big as that big beautiful thing behind it there, but it is big. I'd love to say it's some beautiful Scottish artwork there. But it's not. It's not Scottish. It was a gift. You can see right here as well. This corner right here is where everyone's taking pictures, where everyone's getting selfies. Because that's the shot. That's the shot right there with the castle and the Ross Fountain. That's the shot that everyone wants. That's the one you see on postcards. That's the one at night time when this is lit up and that is lit up. That is just stunning. You don't get a shot like that anywhere else. You gotta love it. Lots of wasps, lots of wasps round about me right now. I'm trying to avoid them, walk away from them as coolly and calmly as possible because that's how you avoid a wasp. Mrs. Brunford, are you listening to me? That's how you avoid a wasp. You don't do what you do and go, Aah! that's not how you avoid a wasp. Anyway, the fountain. So it's not, it's not Scottish. It was built in France at and. Tony Duron, well let me have a look at my notes, I mean I, I did, I did, I have to take notes for this because I don't speak French and since it's not Scottish, my head's like, oh, okay French, learn French, can't learn French. Uh, Anthony Duraini and Sommevoir, S-O-M-M-E-V-O-I-R-E, -E, I don't know how to pronounce that in France. That's where it was built, an ironmonger there in France. Now it was actually built for the Great Exhibition. <laughs> the Great Exhibition in 1862, which took place in London. So it was built in France, uh, it was shipped to London for the Great Exhibition, and then it was spotted by a gun manufacturer. Yep, you heard me right. Gun manufacturer Daniel Ross bought that in 1862 for £2,000. 1862, £2,000 is an incredible amount of money, remember. I've got no idea what that would be worth today and, and with inflation and stuff like that. But he bought it for £2,000 and gifted it to Edinburgh. So this was a gift from a gun maker. So there you go, see? Daniel Ross, gun maker. Ross Fountain. Ross Bandstand. So not only did he buy us a fountain, he got a bandstand made after him as well. Really should have gave him a statue of a gun or something, but we gave him a bandstand instead. 
nowadays this is iconic like i said everyone like, i mean you can see over there again everyone's still taking pictures everyone's wanting to get that view i mean it's beautiful from every angle it's a lovely fountain from every angle but it's with the castle behind it it's with that right there that, that everyone wants i know i'll keep going back to that but it's it's a beautiful shot it's just a stunning beautiful shot it was sculpted by forgive me i have notes again uh jean Baptiste Jules Klangman, Klang, Klangman. Um, French and yeah and for the great exhibition which took place in London which was kind of a world's fair I think is the best way to describe it, it was kind of a world's fair in 1862 in London and yeah it's, it's a weird thing to say I'm going to buy this and give it to my city but something obviously caught his eye about it and he went yeah yeah we need that and why not I mean, he's right, it, it, it's beautiful, it's, it fits right in here. Although, here's a question for you. Does it fit right in here? Because it's always been here as far as I'm concerned, so I know it's always been here, so of course it fits in here. Or does it fit in here because it fits in here? Yeah. However, not everyone liked it. Not everyone liked it when it was first put in. And again, let me go, because it's a quote now, it's a quote. Um, there was a minister called Dean Ramsey, who was a Victorian minister of St John's Episcopal Church. And he described this, this is how he described it, grossly indecent and disgusting, insulting and offending to the moral feelings of the community and disgraceful to the city. It's a fountain. Anyway, so yeah, it, it came and unfortunately it broke down it stopped working and then it sat here for a long time a fountain that wasn't fountaining it just stood there and i have to say for the longest memories i just have that as something that was there and didn't wasn't on i, I did wonder why it wasn't on but i never thought of it however that's a world heritage fountain it is registered as world heritage so it was repaired because it's a world heritage um iconic monument that's what i'm calling it um but it was a lot of work it was a massive 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 amount of work i mean all the it was literally taken to pieces bit by bit and taken away one massive sculptor up there two or three of these ladies there think oh they're sciences there's ah wait there and that's something i read about it and now it's starting to make sense uh, when I'm actually looking at it. You know what it's like when you read about something It doesn't make sense unless you're looking at it. I'm guessing what he found grossly indecent was these ladies pouring water That must be the grossly indecent part or maybe it was these faces because in fairness That's a face So apparently what it's got on it is cherubs the Cherubs are small aren't they? I don't know if that's the cherubs that are pouring the water. I doubt it. No, there's the cherubs. There's the cherubs. Right, okay. So, we're hunting now, guys. There's the cherubs. There they are. Yep. Okay. Cherubs. Tick. Found. There is mermaids. That's the mermaids with the water. I can see their tail. Okay, so the mermaids are pouring the water. Lion heads. Is that supposed to be a lion head? I think that's the lion head. I genuinely don't know though, what do you think? Oh no no no, no no no, forgive me. There's the lion head in between the mermaids. The obvious place for any lion to be. And he looks shocked, in fairness, he looks shocked that he's in between two mermaids. Walrus heads, so that must be the walrus. Now we all know those are walruses. I am the walrus. Cuckoo, 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 cuckoo. In fact, it looks like he's saying cuckoo, cuckoo. He's trying to sing that, it just water keeps coming out of his mouth. And four female figures representing science, art, poetry, and industry. I'm getting all sprayed on by the fountain. Okay, so science, yeah, science. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know what she is, I don't know what that one beside her is. Is that a pen she's holding? Will we go with poetry? We'll go with poetry right now until we can figure out any differently. 
I'm taking you with me now. We're just going to walk around the fountain until we figure out what each one of them is. Science is easy. They're doing science stuff. Right, that, what was it? Science, poetry, industry. Science, art, poetry and industry. Well, now, that looks like a musical instrument. Would you count that as art? Okay, we'll count that as art. That person there, I mean, he looks like he's working. Definitely looks like he's work. Her, sorry, lady working. That's definitely industry there. That must be art. That must be, uh, that must be a paintbrush, because that's a paint palette. So that's art, and the one that was holding the harp must be poetry. So there you go. It stopped working in 2010, apparently. I don't know if it worked on and off since then, but it was in disrepair. I think it essentially got put in and then nothing had really happened to it since and it was in a lot of trouble. So World Heritage, along with Edinburgh Council, as far as I'm aware, said, okay, if we don't fix it, we're going to lose it. So they did a lot of work. And they, had, they, they have, you know, as you can see, it's a working fountain now in the middle of town. I need to get my facts and figures out again, guys, to give you, but I'm sure you can forgive me. 122 individual pieces. Yeah, yeah, I could believe that. Well, I do believe it, because that's what it says on the World Heritage website, that's what it says. 40,000 hours of work. I'm guessing that was from the get-go. And that must have been included in the planning, you know what I mean? How are we going to take this to bits? Where are we going to get it? Everything. 40,000 hours of work to repair it. 650 litres of paint. And it's already coming off. But then it's got water pouring on it all day. So what are you going to do? 1.9. 1.9 million pound to fix it. But it is a World Heritage Monument. Fountain. So, I mean, if we're going to keep our history, and not this is a world... Thing, not just a Scottish thing, if we're going to keep our history, it's going to cost a little bit of money. And we're probably the first time ever that people can do this sort of thing. We can save our history instead of letting it crumble away. Oh, that was deep. That was deep. That came from the heart, that did. That properly came from the heart then. In 2018, it reopened. Big thing went on in the park and back it came. And you can see it's popular. People are gathered around it, just sitting. Get in the picture. You can go over there, you can get a wee coffee and a cake and you can get your picture by the fountain with a castle behind it. Let's just have one last look at that there. I mean, that's a picture. You know what I mean? That is an Instagram shot right there. Look, there's no one even in front of me. That is just, everyone's just been so kind. I hate them. So there you have it, guys story of the Ross Fountain. Like I said, it's not. It didn't impact on Edinburgh history in any way, apart from the fact that we now have it and it's an iconic thing to have and it's beautiful, but it's history and it's just as important as the history that makes a nation. It's the history of a city. Oh, where is this coming out of today? This, apparently I'm in that sort of mood today, apparently I'm deep. This is obviously a very very oh, tree tree <laughs> this is obviously a very very deep day for me today that i'm just coming out with all this i think i might have to go home and ponder the meaning of life the universe and everything 42 anyway yeah i think that'll do us for today guys i think you, this is we're, this is the new town prince street gardens you know we're right right at the back end right at the, the west end of prince street Gardens. it's a beautiful little spot to relax someone was asking for somewhere to come and chill away from the crowds. There's going to be a little crowd. There's somewhere to eat and there's a park for the kids to play on. But it's a relaxing spot. You can chill on the grass. You're allowed to see, see this? See this right here? That? You're allowed to. I'm allowed to go on the grass here. You can sit, you can chill, you can relax. So yeah, it's a nice spot if you're looking for a spot to come to and now you know the history of it. So again, you can, you can entertain your friends with, you know who bought that friend, bro? A guy who makes guns. Mr. Ross, Mr. Daniel Ross. Don't know if he still makes guns now, I doubt it, probably dead. I think that'll do us for today, guys. Uh, please remember, you know, usual stuff, guys. Give it a like if you've enjoyed the video. 
uh, please remember to leave a comment uh, if you ask anyone who leaves comment I always in one way or another try to get back to you whether I just enjoy your comment and give it a nice big uh, like or a comment I always read them all I always have a look at them so please do leave a comment um, we're heading towards festival it's going to be festival stuff soon but I just wanted to give us a break from that before we head into it and it's it's nice um, but yeah remember to subscribe please remember to subscribe and um, at this point we're not quite at 4,000, we're at 3,972 right now. We're so close to uh, the making of this video. Uh, maybe by the time you watch it, we'll be there. I don't know. So yeah, subscribe if you haven't. Until next time. Bye humans.